and Scipio Africanus was a man of combat. Liddell Hart writes a stirring account of Africanus as he campaigned throughout Hispania, starting with a surprise attack on and capture of Carthago Nova, and continuing through a number of military and diplomatic triumphs. As Liddell Hart reminds us throughout the text, Africanus was no mere one-dimensional warlord. This was a man with a keen mind who understood the importance of diplomacy while on campaign. Some of his most impressive actions in Hispania involved winning over local tribes who would ally with and support the Romans as they sought to drive Carthage from the Iberian. In fact, Liddell Hart provides us with ample evidence Africanus could be considered a virtuous general. For example, when Carthago Nova fell to the cunning of the Roman general, his men began what so many other ancient armies did, to massacre the population and search for plunder. Africanus walked through the town for a short while as this went on, then issued a command, and the pillaging ceased immediately. From there, Africanus declared that the captured men of Carthago Nova, about 10,000 in number, to be freed, and he restored their property to them. The 2,000 artisans of Carthago Nova were enslaved, but Africanus gave his word that each would be freed upon the defeat of Carthage, if they gave their full effort to the Roman cause. It is clear the purpose of the initial and short-lived rampage was to ensure the population understood the magnanimity of Africanus' behavior. This was in stark contrast to Hannibal's behavior in Saguntum, less than a decade earlier and 300 miles away, where the entire town was put to the sword when they refused to vacate their homes after their defenses were overrun by Hannibal's Carthaginian troops. Little Hart makes certain we understand how unusual Africanus' behavior was for his time, even if our modern sensibilities tell us to spare the civilians. It would be easy to write this biography starting with Carthago Nova and, con and concluding with the Battle of Zama, where Scipio Africanus defeated Hannibal, broke Carthaginian power forever, and earned his agnomen. Liddell Hart, however, does not take the easy way out. A significant part of this book takes place after Zama. We learn that the Roman people attempted to bestow countless honors on Africanus, including counsel for life and dictator, but were rebuffed by their heroic general. The man who had saved Rome in her darkest hour had now set his sights on saving her virtue. We will return to this subject a little later on in the review. It's just me. Well, you know, brother, first you have to know who you are. Okay. And until you know who you are, you can't talk about leadership. You know, you used a phrase a few minutes ago, African-American. Let me give you the true history. When Hannibal crossed the, the mountains and went into what's now known as Italy, he took 30,000 soldiers from Carthage. Yes, sir. And he took those soldiers there and he conquered all of Italy. Yes, sir. Sicily, all of that. And when he conquered them, you know what he did? He kept them there for over 30, to over 20. Yeah. And Hannibal, rather than allow them to kill him, he committed suicide. Yes, he did. Yes. And the man who did that, his name was Scipius Africanus. Mm -hmm. And then he went on to Carthage, and then they named a continent that was known as Eden. And uh, prior to that, it was known as Kemet. All right. And then what they did was they turned around after they did all of that and named the whole Canada, continent after a Caucasian. God, and people, I don't call myself an African because I'm not. Okay. All right? I'm a Moorish Israelite. What on the screen will we bring you hot topics. Now, in this clip, I'm going to show you now. This is going to show you how the so-called white man whitewashed every great civilization on the band. Now, this is the Carthaginians, Hannibal and the Carthaginians. I'm going to show you, and everyone knows it's a fact, without any doubt, that Hannibal is a so-called black man. But in this clip, he's going to be perceived as a white man. So, here's the story. Whitewash. Check it out. Right back.
Hannibal, a man born in the 3rd century BC in Carthage. His name echoes through the ages. He is considered one of the greatest generals of ancient times and has gone down in history as an adept tactician who conceived daredevil plans. Hannibal's home was in Carthage, Africa, a city situated in what now is Tunisia. His aim was to defeat the Roman Empire. Hannibal, a man with many faces. He is said to have been unscrupulous and cruel, yet he was also duteous, modest and always very attentive to the well-being of his men. With his siege of Saguntum in 221, Hannibal puts all his eggs in one basket and starts a world war. He set out across the Alps on his way to Rome with 40,000 men, 4,000 horses and 37 war elephants. This plan must have been born of a combination of genius and madness. Lumbering elephants were expected to surmount 2,000 meter high passes. It was an almost unending struggle for everyone involved and a great logistic challenge. They had to trudge over mountain sides, towing winter equipment, food and weapons. The only way to traverse the mountains was via trails on which man and beast could only proceed in single file. As a result, the procession of soldiers stretched over many kilometers. The march was endless. The troops had no way of replenishing their rations. For Hannibal, this was an unacceptable situation, so he made a smart tactical decision. He split up his soldiers into two groups and sent them on different routes. After Hannibal had put the Alps behind him, he proceeded on a triumphant march through northern Italy. The Romans were subjected to defeat after defeat. Hannibal was now the general who put fear into the hearts of the Romans. Hannibal continually drove his enemy into ambushes, taking advantage of surprise situations and the adaptability of his soldiers. Who deserved to rule the known world? Was it Rome or Carthage? This question would now be resolved on the field of battle. It Alright, so let's go over this scripture that goes along with the video. Alright, we're going to read Job chapter 3 from the top. And what I'm going to prove right now that Rome is invaded Carthaginia, which is a neighboring city of Judah. Alright, so the Carthaginians were black people. I'm going to prove that now. For behold, in those days and in the time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, which is the black Americans and the people in Jamaica and all the islands. I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will plead with them there for my people and for my inheritance Israel, which is the 12 tribes, including Judah. All right whom they have scattered among the nations all right the diaspora all right so let's look up the diaspora let's look up diaspora look a dispersion or spread a people from the original homeland okay let's go right here all right people who have spread from their homeland the dispersed of the Jewish people which is the black Americans all right and look the, the, the world origin in the late 17th century with reference to the Jew, Greek from the and the Greeks, because we was in the Greek captivity. That's the apocrypha, which the Bible, which they took that work that out the Bible. All right, the Book of Maccabees and etc. From the diasporan dispersed from dia across sparing scatter. The term originate. In the sect Sectuagint, all right, look, Deuteronomy 28 and 25, in the phrase diaspora, all right, thou shall be a dispersion in all the kingdoms of the earth, all right, so let's go to that, um, Deuteronomy, 
Deuteronomy 28 and 25. And then we're going to go back to this chapter right here. So Deuteronomy 28 and 25. Word on the screen. We bring you hot topics. All right. Let's go to that. All right. And the Lord shall... And the Lord shall make the rain of the of the land powder and dust from the heavens shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. And I check this out: the Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth and that's dropped down to 68 all right check this out and the lord shall bring thee into egypt again with ships so we go the lord gonna bring us back into slavery again with ships by the way whereof i spake unto thee Thou shalt see it no more again, meaning Jerusalem, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies, meaning the white man and the other nations who bought us, for bond men and bond women, slave men and slave women, and no man shall buy you. Buy you. And, and check this out. Let's go to the next chapter at the top, Deuteronomy 29 and 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to speak with the children of Israel in the land of Moab behind beside the covenant which he beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb all right and let's go there the covenant he made it with us in Horeb let's go there all right and check this out these be the words which Moses spake unto Israel on the side of Jordan and the wilderness in the plain against the Red Sea between pa Paran and Tophel and Laban. So he's speaking to the children of Israel. All right, so let's go back to Joel chapter 3. And we're going to continue reading. All right, Joel chapter 3. All right, so we're gonna start here. We're gonna start back at two. I will gather all nations. I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered amongst the nations and parted my land and divided my land so right now in the land is Amalek or you could call them the Khazars all right the son of Esau and they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a holler and a girl for wine that they might drink yea and what have ye had to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and and all the coasts of, of Philistine? So this is the Phoenicians. This is Hannibal's people, who the Lord is talking to right here. That's why I brought the scripture out. What what ye render? Will you render me recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, I will return your recompense upon your own head all right because you have taken my silver and my gold and carried away into your temples my goodly and pleasant things also the children of also of judah and the children of jerusalem have you sold unto the grecians that you might remove them from far far from my, their borders Behold, I will raise them out of the place where did I have sold them, and I will return your recompense on your own head. All right, so that was a little breakdown on that. Right, we're gonna go back here. We're gonna check this out right here. 
I wanted to touch on this. The Carthaginian I- Iberia, meaning these are the, the black Carthaginians, which is the Moors, the black Moors from, Cart- Cart- from Carthaginia, which is the Phoenicians, their presence in actual Spain. All right, and on this map right here, this is Spain, and Spain is connected to Africa and Asia. So these people, the so-called white man, we always been in contact with the white man, all right? The Phoenicians is the Carthaginians, all right? So during like the 7th century all the way into the 15th century, the Moors and the Jews, the people of Israel, and the, the Moors of North Africa, Carthage, we ruled Europe. King James, the first of England, and the, the King James, I think he was the fifth of, of Ireland. He was a black king from the house of Israel. All right. Some say he was a Benjamite, some say he was a, a Judite, but he was from the Southern Kingdom of Israel. All right, so with that in mind, we're going to end this study here. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Please hit the like button. You know, I'm trying to bring good information to our people. And subscribe if you haven't. With that on the in mind, thank you for watching Word on the Screen and peace. Thank you for watching Word on the Screen. Here's your bonus footage of the day. Peace. By 260 BC, Rome controlled more than 52,000 square miles, the entire Italian peninsula south of the Po River, and she would not stop here. Rome's reach across the map was now bumping elbows with another, much older empire, Carthage. This powerful empire controlled much of North Africa, Spain, Sicily, and Sardinia. First settled by traders from what is now Lebanon, the city of Carthage was founded in 814 BC, before Rome was even a collection of mud huts. Called the great jewel of the Mediterranean, Carthage was rivaled by no other city on earth, least of all young Rome. Little is known about the Carthaginians who left behind almost no written record. What is known comes from archaeological finds and stories passed down by the Greeks and Romans. But one scrap of evidence about Carthage overshadows all others, a bizarre ritual that struck even the Romans as utterly barbaric. The god Baal Hamon demanded human sacrifice from the ancient Africans. Carthage gave him her children. In a sacred ceremony, a priest lifted up the child, strangled him to death, then burned the small body in a ritual fire. These carved stones mark the graves of sacrificed babies. There are thousands near Carthage. Hundreds of children at a time were killed in the desperate attempt to bring rain in times of drought or repulse an enemy in times of war. Romans claimed that child sacrifice was the root of Rome's hatred for Carthage. More likely, the African Empire simply stood in Rome's ambitious way. Rome continued to claim her wars were defensive, but it's doubtful even Romans believed this once she turned a hungry eye toward Africa. 265 BC. The first Punic War with Carthage seemed horribly one-sided. Carthage was a great sea power, and Romans had never fought a single battle at sea.
And so the Romans, in order to fight a, a naval war, had to develop a navy. And they got a break early in this war when they found a Carthaginian warship that had accidentally washed up on the shore of the Italian coast after having been abandoned by its crew during a storm. And they closely studied the Carthaginian vessel. They took it apart, found out how it was built, and then built hundreds of exact replicas of this Carthaginian ship. So the Romans now had a fleet. New to naval warfare, the Romans had to find a way to turn things to their advantage. They soon found the answer. Instead of bombarding from a distance, Roman soldiers boarded the enemy's ships using a specially designed plank called a corvus. In hand-to-hand -hand combat, the Roman legions were just as deadly as on land. It took 23 years of fighting, but the Romans won the First Punic War in 241 BC. Romans seized the rich islands of Sicily and Sardinia and forced the king of Carthage to sign a crushing treaty, giving the empire's entire treasury to Rome. It said a young boy witnessed his people's humiliation that day. The son of a Carthaginian general looked on, bitter, vowing revenge. The child's name was Hannibal. Like I took right on the street. Struggle. Hard time. In my community. Yeah.